We have a Landmarks Commission to order uh, for January 23rd, 2019. Uh, we'll take the roll. Uh, Paul Marnsky is here. Susan? Here. Veronica? Here. Justin? Here. Ron? Here. Ian? And David? Both excused. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda uh, is, is the approval of the agenda for uh, today's meeting. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of approval of today's agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the January 14, 2019 meeting of the Landmarks Commission. Um, again, do I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor of the approval of the minutes from January 14th, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, motion carries unanimously. Uh, on to regular business. Uh, consideration with possible action on a window replacement project at 131 North Broadway. Um, this was on the agenda from the previous meeting and it was tabled um, so that we could get the uh, representative of the project uh, here to discuss it. Um, I think we will maybe just start out with a uh, quick refresher of the background on this by, by Jason. Is that appropriate? Sure, if you like. Uh, the property owner here owns the building shown at left. Uh, it's a little out of date. It says a bag lady. I don't think it's a bag lady anymore. Uh, the proposed project involves replacing the storefront windows with some roller overhead type door windows. As I understand it, only the windows in that area would be replaced. The brick below remains the same, the doors remain the same, and the general surround with the, the pilasters and the big header across the top stay the same. Um, at our last meeting, we briefly discussed out of their overhead garage style doors in historic districts, and, and I was unable to provide you with any concrete guidance on this. Okay. Um, Stephanie, do I need to have a motion to open the floor for discussion? Or? Yes, please. Okay, so. Motion to open the floor? Second. Uh, vote on that. Aye. 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 Yeah. So, property owner? What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I think you have to state what, what your you, name. Okay, William, William Widmer. And address. Do I you want the spelling on the last name, Stephanie? I've got that. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you for coming here today. Um, sorry yeah. about. The somehow miscommunication, you didn't realize that we had the last meeting. Okay. Uh, I think that uh, we did talk about this in depth at the last meeting, and um, I, I guess if you want to just give us a, a quick, brief overview of, of your intentions of the building, and, and we've got the drawings and, and, and we've kind of seen those, but just explain to us, you know, what you want to do. And, and yeah, well, the, the, the two big uh, square panes of glass mm -hmm. would come out. Um, they got to put a center post in that's maybe three times as wide as the one in the picture there so that there's room for a track on each side and then it'll be segmented glass probably four pieces that replaces each one of those square windows okay. still thermal glass still aluminum frames you know the difference is it'll open and it'll, it'll be split into four horizontally and how are they open they're, they're just standard garage doors, only the where there would usually be an insulated panel, there's insulated glass. Gotcha. Yeah. What color will the framing be for that? Uh, the same color as is on the building, I think is what's on there. It, I think it's said anodized, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, which, it's, uh, it's, 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 we, it's we anodized that type of, that company that that storefront's done in is yeah. not the same company that the garage door comes from. So well, we whether the anodizing matches exactly, probably not. But so well, that's one of the things that we want as a uh, to keep it um, in line with other buildings uh, or with the expectation of a historic to make it look more historic is to not have the the shiny anodized aluminum. Okay. Um, but what's on there now? I, I actually walk by there every day. I live on yeah. the side of town. 
is like a baked enamel with a sort of tan kind of. Right. Color. I mean, it, it is anodized. <coughs> is is what it is. It's anodized aluminum. But it's, what, but it's got a baked matters. enamel finish, not just a not just the shiny. Right, right. And, right, and and right. and it may have Which been is, it may have been shiny too. That metal just kind of loses its luster over years too, you know. Oh, so. well, no, I, I'm pretty sure it has the baked enamel on it as it, as I looked at. When so, I looked at it. yeah. It one good. of the questions or, or one of the things that we talked about the last time was the difference in the way the overhead garage doors make the appearance of the facade look, and. We've got the example up there of Washington Street. Yep. And you can kind of see the two different ways that they treated those openings. Mm -hmm. And there were two concerns that we had based on, on those examples. Um, the example on the left has m a much thinner mullion pattern than okay. the overhead doors on the right. Yeah. Which, on the second floor there. Which, which we felt was preferential because it looks more characteristic of the the size of mullions you'd have in a historic district. Okay. And from the drawings that were submitted, we don't know what the intention is of that overhead door. Um, Let's see. Uh, the the second <coughs> thing that we talked about at length was the actual color of the framing on the door. Yeah. And I think that the discussion was simply if the framing on the door is a dark bronze color, similar to what again what you see on the left, yeah, it makes the door essentially disappear, and it creates more of a look that it's a full pane of glass, which is similar to what your storefront looks like now. Okay. And so our question was, I mean that that's fine with me. That's the that's by far the cheapest option. It costs more to change the color away from bronze. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that's what you want, I, I I see what you're saying, and from here in a photograph, you're you're probably correct. When you stand right up to it on the sidewalk, it's not blended in. Right. I mean, it's it's painfully obvious that there's breaks in the glass there. So, right. but if that's what you guys like, yeah, that's the cheapest option. So I'm I'm fine I'm fine with doing that. You know, uh, part of our concern is that we're setting a precedent here. There isn't really a guideline. So everybody who comes to us from, from here on out is going to say this was done on this building. So with the garage door, with the, the with the with the yeah with the uh, door window thing. Um, so that's why that was one of the reasons we wanted to get it right. I think. Yeah. So 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 what was the previous thing? I know my my other business we did a couple of years ago, Ned Kelly's, mm -hmm. and um, there was none of this wasn't involved in it. But I mean there was plans and it was approved and whatever but we never went through there was this a, so I guess I'm there I'm, wasn't an ordinance before this is this, okay. this whole commission is new this year okay and then also Ned Kelly's wasn't in a district at that time okay it still isn't it's not historic okay so the Broadway is uh, a historic yeah, you're in the Broadway district yeah and so that's the difference so where do you and and maybe this has nothing to do with this, but just so I understand what you guys are doing, where, what does the historic, what what do you guys, what's your concern when a building has already been when its historic value has already been stripped of it? I mean, because none of none of the front of that, not none of the windows on the first story, none of the windows on the second story, not that brick, not the concrete on the sides, none of it. Is how the building was, and that's, well, that's a what great we talked question. about. So yeah, we had talked about that too. That yeah, it's I still mean, a, it's not, still a none of it is. It, it's a 1980s building, is what it's it is. It's still a contributing build, listed as a contributing building to the district. So yeah. you know, um, it was we identified had, as a historically significant building, looking as it does now. So to okay. put it into perspective, if if you had owned that building and and all of the treatment that you just talked about, if if this commission, I'm guessing, would probably not allow what we see here to be built. Sure. If, if that was brought for us today, okay. Simply because it's not, uh, it's not similar to the period of significance for that building, and and so I think that we can't undo the past. Somebody before you or whatnot has has done those right facade renovations, but what we're trying to do as a commission is is still honor the intent of what the National Park Service says is appropriate for a historic district. Um, the compromise that we're making is that, quite honestly, the overhead doors 
aren't historic at all. Right. But I think it's the, I don't want to speak on behalf of everybody here, but I think the idea is is that we understand that this is popular for businesses, especially in summer months, to be able to be able to open up their facades. Um, and so that's why we're looking for some compromise with, well, let's do this in a way that's the most sensitive to the original look of the building that we okay. can. And so while your facade, we know that the brick on the bottom isn't original to the building. Um, the shape and the size of those two storefront windows you have, though, probably is pretty close to what it looked like originally. Sure. Um, and so, you know, even if we're maintaining the proportions of those openings, we feel like we're still doing a service to the district and the architecture. Um, you know, likewise, in the future, if you come back to us and, and and you want to upgrade those windows on the second floor, I think the commission is going to recommend that the windows are something that's more historically accurate than something that's just off the shelf at a local sure. home improvement store. Um, so that's the intention of the, of the commission, is just to try and balance the needs of the historic district in terms of businesses and their operation and also maintaining the, the character of the district that brings everybody there. Works for me. Sounds like a good explanation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, 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 what would you guys like? If you do make a motion, I would just kindly request that you recognize that the dimensions of the fenestration are not being altered, and that no historically significant material is being removed and discarded as part of this. Right. I was wondering, too, Jason, if you wanted to comment, just so you would understand where, what the official federal view is on... You know, I can't find any historic landmarks commission that gives a thumbs up to overhead roller doors in a historic district, unless it's on a building that was used for, like, garage purposes or, sure. or a gas station or something like that. Um, that's great. I'm kind of a realist, too, and I recognize that, hey, we're not doing harm because this material isn't historic, and, you know, property owner rights should be respected insofar as it's possible and we're not compromising the historic integrity of the building so I'm kind of on your side here I'm yeah <laughs> I'm pushing that, you That's know what I like to hear we should we should be open to this but at the same time if we say that we're open to it we need to be able to demonstrate to the next person that this did no harm that yeah the, the opening wasn't made bigger that they didn't tear up something that was old and historic that you know within very set parameters we're okaying this so as to not be locked in a position where we have to okay it for any and every other situation. Sure, sure. Well, I mean, it, it seems to me that a lot of it would have to do with what we're taking out. I mean, if that was historic glass and it was all original, then I'd feel bad taking it out. But that's not the situation we find ourselves in here. You know, okay. I'd go on further though and say that if you were getting rid of that lower brick wall and wanting these doors to go ceiling to to ground, yeah. that that would really alter the character of the building, so much so that we're getting into the red zone. Okay. Um, given Even that you're not that changing the size of the opening, yeah. I'm inclined to say, yeah, but let's not brag about it too much. <laughs> sure. And then didn't we also have discussion too about if the two places on Broadway, uh, excuse me, on Washington Street, that it would be preferred that it be more like the glass color on the left than the glass color on the right? Well, the where, it, where it blends in to where the, the state, it, does, where it doesn't stand out itself? The state's preservation architect was very adamant that <coughs> all the glass be clear glass, not low E or reflective. And was very much against a, an anodized finish, finished finish, so to speak, um, that he wants a baked on paint or something like that. But in our conversation here, we got into the discussion of what are the existing storefront doors right. finished with, True. and would driving one way then make the other stand out in a terrible way that it doesn't already? And these are these are decorated questions I can't answer. Right. <laughs> the, frame. the frames of the doors are also that baked enamel uh, of the same color that's on the window frame. So it looks like uh, the, jet, the only thing that's that's that shiny aluminum is the the push in the center. Um, so uh, 
I don't know, I, I guess if we do a, a baked enamel on the roller doors or the, is the, br the brown, is that, that's anodized? It's, but not, an, but an, not, it's but anodized not baked, as well, but it's the way that it comes is anodized. Um, yeah, I mean, ba basically they can anodize it in several different colors. Oh, okay. And then if you don't want one of those standard colors, then they come through and paint them I afterwards. See. I gotcha. Okay. But <coughs> the problem is, is that all of those materials, all those anodized finishes, they all, they all fade out. So, so that would have so, to be, so be hard if, to match. If we, if we match that, <coughs> it won't be exactly matched. Right. So, so. the bronze would be the cheapest, so. and that's what they have. I mean, vintage yeah. I mean, if, if if you want the the manufacturer that um, that will use on vintage is the manufacturer that we're using. Okay. So, um, the, the doors on the left there on on vintage Cantina, those are much more accurate. To, that's a lot closer sure. to the door we're going to have. It's made by the same manufacturer. I don't know whose door is on the nines there. Okay. Um, okay. Um, any other discussion? Uh, I guess I will go ahead and make a motion that we approve the installation of... Do we have to close the floor? First? Yes, please. Oh. Right. I'll make a motion that we close the floor. <laughs> Second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, hearing none, um, I would make a motion that we go ahead and approve the installation of the overhead doors uh, at this address uh, with the stipulation that the framing of the overhead units is dark brown anodized and of the smallest profile uh, available. Um, and that uh, the remainder of the facade uh, is uh, materials are, are, are um, not removed uh, or replaced as a part of this project. And that the openings are, um, the opening sizes are maintained as they currently exist. Yeah, it's gonna be a little smaller in the middle because they gotta get two, you know, a track for each door on I, there. I so it won't be the two inches, it's gonna come out to like six or seven. Yeah, and we understand In the middle that. there. <laughs> um, we'd like to see that, that center mullion as small, kept as small as physically possible. Okay. We saw the drawing, we saw the framing, but along with what we're trying to, to get at, the, the lighter that center post can be, we think is more in the spirit of, of those openings. Okay. Clear glass. Clear glass. Yeah. No, I mean, the glass is, you're fine with the no, glass no, that's no. there, because I just want yep. the glass to match. It doesn't, yep. right. You're fine with it matching what's there. Yep. Okay. So, Stephanie, uh, do you want to reread what I just sort of said that was sort of added to? <laughs> Uh, the following conditions. Framing of the unit is a dark bronze anodized and smallest profile available. The remainder of the facade shall not be removed or replaced. The openings will be maintained as they exist in clear glass to match the existing glass. I think that's it. I think that was it. So that would oh. be my motion. So I will second that motion. Uh, any other discussion? I got another question on this building. So I, right, right, right now I'm going to run out of money. So I'm not I'm not opening this can of worms now, but I really don't like the brick that's below those uh, below those windows. We don't just me. So if at some <laughs> point in time I want to deal with that brick, what is your recommendation? What would you like that portion to look like? I think we could find out first what was there originally. It's going to be missing because I've seen it from the inside, and there's nothing. It's that's not going over something. It replaced something. So unless. Unless there's an old photograph out there. But that's why I was wondering, like, at the novel. Well, yeah, I don't know, po possibly, you know. Um. Yeah, a lot of those storefronts, and if you look at the picture on the bottom right, a lot of those storefronts didn't necessarily have masonry on the base. It was, a lot of times, it was a wood framed. Yeah, this one's a little deeper into the 20th century, 1920s, so, you know, you could certainly replace that brick. A more economical choice might be a faux paint to match the brick up high in color and stuff. Um, I've seen that done quite, quite amazingly well on other buildings. But uh, then you get into a paint cycle of you know, right. trying to keep that up too. Um, uh, you'd want it to match the brick that's above, ideally, right? I mean, that would be the... Ideally. And you wouldn't want to change, you still wouldn't want to change the size of the fenestration. <laughs> Yeah, ideally. Um, if we could find an old photograph, then, you know, that 
provides a pretty good guideline yeah. for what I know a lot of them, if you look at like the historic photograph there on the bottom right, a lot of times too that was, you know, concrete or, or almost exclusively mortar, which worked before they salted roads and sidewalks the way they do now, but to put concrete down there now, it just gets eaten away. Yeah, like um, so, I don't know. We can look for photos for you too. You doing it, that's even better, yeah. <laughs> 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 West Side book, too. West, West Side book. <laughs> yeah, it's about like that. But okay. there's some old photos, and the novel might have something, too. They All right. They could maybe do some digging for you. Sounds okay, good. So I think it's sounds good. The second floor of the library. Thank All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we had a motion and a second, so uh, we discussed, and uh, we're at the point of a vote. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Great. Um, that would take care of that item. Um, at this point, I don't think we have anything else on the agenda. Our next meeting is Monday, February 11th. Um, unless there's any other business that anybody would like to discuss, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Uh, good Easy luck enough. To you. Thank you. When do you plan to open? Uh, probably the end of March.